Hi everybody um, and um, happy World Community Arts Day. We're here at Bridge End um, at our creative writing group, Write It Out. Um, and we have um, here um, fantastic writers and people that I'm going to introduce you to soon. So World Community Arts Day, we're looking forward to presenting our work to you. My name is Rose Ritchie, thank you. I'm a volunteer here. What do I do? I build the Buffy. There's the Buffy. Um, Shakira, you build the... The Buffy. Buffy. Um, I, um, so I learned loads of amazing kind of traditional and environmentally friendly building techniques that I didn't know how to do before. I don't know how to do any of it. Uh, now I can do carpentry and woodwork and straw bale building and you know loads of other stuff. It's really fun. Um, and I do loads of things here. Gardening and um, like fun activities and helping with events, painting kids' faces, and beautiful circus skills, circus and beautiful crafts as well. Arts and crafts. There you go. I'm working on the tapestry project right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a pat tapestry problem. We're Make doing a, a, a local a tap tapestry of Scotland. And we're doing a bridge end uh, panel in the tapestry. <laughs> There's a lot happening here at Bridge End, and you can see there in the background Zoe, who's just made it up some the lovely tea and coffee. And Zoe, what do you do here at Bridge End? I'm a creator first, so I kind of uh, yeah. um, sort out of the activities, and I help with the community and try and put people together if they're interested in the same things, and yeah, just whatever comes up really. Mm. And well, make tea. And make tea and got a beautiful coffee for us. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So we're here at Bridge Ends and we're going to be speaking with you again very soon. My name is Ross Pollock. My novel is called The Schism is Real. I call it a fantasy novel with mental health issues. He's critically mentally ill, barely surviving, and the other is transported to a fantasy realm where he must begin adulthood again, whole and unburdened. But thrust into a magical war, he must again survive using his new power and save all that is dear to him, friends, a love, and beauty itself, or lose his sanity once more. Chapter 1. Sliding. In case of emergency, shut your eyes and pray. The words scrawled on the wall are all I can read. I dutifully climb into the box and I'm covered up by a large slab. An air hole shines a light on a spot marked out in scrawls of fingernails and pain. I shouldn't have asked them for this, to be taken away from my life to theirs. It wasn't a thought out process, but then I am clinically insane to even think on these terms. The box shudders. A bright light envelops me. I peek, peek through a hole at the light, but only see only brightness burning my retinas. I reach out a solitary finger to touch the stone wall, a pale green colour and it feels the same, slick and cold. Bumps have bumps and also lumps scratched out from others who may have been here also. But why would they be afraid? Why on earth would they not find solace that this is the right plan? A booming voice I hear, but no words I understand. Before this, life had never been kind to me. While outward appearance is deceived, as I shared in being one of the beautiful in the land, flush-faced, high cheekbones, a dark-haired Adonis, I grew tall, and my eyes pierced through to the souls of all I met. However, my head had failed to produce the necessary chemicals to take the toll life brings us. I slipped. I was crushed and catastrophically collapsed inside myself. That I never truly recovered from that which burned my brain and took away any semblance of a real person. It took away all the things one has to control to keep a happy life, friends and family. But don't get me wrong, I love myself even through the scars of time. That is why I came to the conclusion to change reality for the better, to keep loving myself. I do so love myself. I cannot just let it all go and fall into a shattered, darkened existence. So I may have made this choice at one time to hold on and feel the love for myself. When the darkness began to engulf me, I was taken unawares. The people closest to me were taken much the same. Dragged through the dark, not many would have chosen such an existence, and indeed they did not stay long. My mind swelled and faded. 
Where did it go? I asked. Who are you and why are they here now? Extra voices included themselves into my conscious mind, not to force me to prepare for a war, just to be with me and protect me from the world. There was no need for protectionism. We can all see that. All the same, it came to this. The Russian, the mouse and the other. We became fast friends, the best friends a man could ask for in this cruel, devious world. Or so I thought. The real world friends seemed hesitant to meet my internal friends and eventually a distance grew. I don't blame them. My head grew strong though, strong and full with these friends of the mind, though they are not very social or friendly. Protection was the game and they played to win, which they did well. Many real people were cast out in the early days and easily faded into their graves of time. I, the other, predominantly took on the tasks of the day, the work. I still had university to go to after all. The night is when I could put my feet up and let them loose. Not that I had any choice in the matter. They came at will and struggled daily to be free for their own lives. The Russian is a dominant character, a fighter the one you can always rely on to handle a tight situation. I love him dearly for the days when I couldn't get up to drink the water of life. The scars on his face were only a representation of the battles won in order to save me. His long, rippled hair and thick beard shines red in anger and repression. From his heavy jacket and boots, he looks to be a mobster, and the cold Arctic breeze can't even begin to penetrate those layers. The mouse, by contrast, is clean cut and made for warm summer, as the tight tea and light cotton shoes give away. He gives where the Russian takes and is not afraid to take things to the darkest of places. His face is bright, your eyes drawn to his, sparkling green as they are much deeper than you've seen before. Go to him and talk, they say. As for me, I'm not like them. My short hair is unkempt, but my beard kept neat. I have no scars nor gleaming come hither eyes. I'm gaunt now, but a strength shines through. I do not declare myself in the way others do. My look is nondescript. It won't give away my secret personality, likes and dislikes. I prefer it this way, but don't forget, I'm not saying I'm antisocial. My face is a shining star on top of a drab tree. The light brings many until the brightness fades and darkness reigns. It is in the sprawling city that I love that I was corrupted. The toxicity rained heavy down upon me, and even the grand churches held no sanctity nor the castle any barrier to it. The university lumbered into life as I arrived, but the cold steel of engineering could not save me from myself. My eyes saw all these things yet did not understand them. I went there, I included myself in the ranks, yet found no hope or joy in return. I walked crowded streets with princes, them dressed opulently, but I felt I could never quite touch them or find their level to be an associate. I was alone and fearful, though I can't say why. The city was bright and green, tall old buildings with plenty to do and see. It was the people who broke me, the uncaring, the toxic, the narcissistic, the selfish, the ridiculed and humiliated me by the end and I needed a friend to pull me from the tire that was slowly engulfing me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ross. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Phyllis Ross. I have been thinking about writing a book for some time now about my mother who had dementia. But after she died, my husband also developed dementia and his experience was quite different. And so I've decided to write a play explaining the difference that they both had. Um, and I have found this, um, this class which I decided to, to join at Bridge End for help really. I'm now working quite well on my play but I've also discovered that um, writing poetry is quite enjoyable. And so I'd like to give you a couple of pieces of my poetry work to start with, as the play is not quite ready to, uh, to face the public, if you like. The first poem is about, um, is about my husband. I think of all my yesterdays and 
how short life is, gone in the blast of wind. Why can't I hear his voice? I can be everywhere, but no sound. I see all my yesterdays, when I was a child, the days in school. I see him there in the background, waiting, but still there's no sound. Childhood years have gone, teenage years come with laughter and tears, but he's there at the end. He's come. This is his time. But still there's no sound. He cared for me and for his girls in our time. Love was always there to help and guide us. Always there to fix up something that was broken and whether it was a sink or a heart. Quietly heading up a rocky boat. He sees it now too, but still there's no sound. He's gone and no longer there to guide us. I sit at the hospital bed talking to him, telling him of all the things that we did together, all the fun we had and the life we shared. But he slipped away without a sound. Thank you. Thank you so much, Phyllis. Thank you. Well, my name is Frank Smith. I write poetry, songs and short stories. And this is a poem that I've written called A Stranger Passing By. My life has been interrupted, a moment frozen in time. Twilight has found me out, alone, standing, thinking with you because it's right, because it's wrong. I never asked those questions. Eyes wide open, mind tightly closed. Not seeing the possibilities, not realising the dream. We were strangers on our way to somewhere else. Someone else. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you. This one's called Sunlight. It was written first as a song, but I haven't got around to put the music to it yet. Let the light of the sun protect you. May its warmth be there to caress you. Never let the days darken your spirits. Don't let dark thoughts take over you. Love is in abundance that surrounds you. All you have to do is believe. Recognise it when you see it. Hold it. Breathe it. Exude it like life itself. Wrap yourself up in it. Don't let doubt deceive you. Some will set traps to confine you. Don't fall for the false platitudes. Have faith in yourself to seek out the light. You have brightness inside of you. Righteousness walks alongside of you. Your stride dances through life. And your heart pulsates with the beat of life. Hi, my name's uh, Rose Ritchie and um, we're, we're at Bridgend Farmhouse right now. Um, we're surrounded by the howling wind and rain and so I think it's probably appropriate to do my uh, poem about um, the rain. I love the rain because you can cry so silently, feeling the chilling sadness like a friend with empathy touching your eyes and walk her down the Royal Mile. I love the rain in my high-heeled shoes, high-heeled dread stilettos gather dirt as they walk down the Royal Mile. I love the rain. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shackworth. Um, I'm just writing in my diary, so I'm going to share my feelings. Um, it's about the happiest Christmas that I ever had, which is the most recent one just gone. I want to remember it forever, what the winter holidays and what the festive season was like, and so what it can be like again. Also, what it felt like looking forward to it and looking back on it, feeling the relief and celebration of discovering that I can have a happy Christmas. It all felt real in the way that it does when I'm out of my head, a little further from my fears and the unreality of feeling that that is what I'm used to, 
but instead feeling the connection to the real world and how much better it feels to connect to a reality that is full of hope and joyous anticipation instead of fear and trepidation. Thank you. Thank you. This poem is about my grandson who's just lost his dog. A little boy sat by the river, all alone and sad. He'd lost his dog, Sparrow, and was confused by the feeling. Death was new to him and so close. Then Zabina, his other dog, came up. Came up. She sat by his side and he was no longer sad. She pulled her, he pulled her down and she snuggled up. Sparrow will be missed, but they have each other. Death was strange, but less frightening now. Mum and Dad came down to the river. They sat by the boy and the dog all sad, but so glad to have each other. They've taken out, sorry my writing's bad, they've taken out the, they have each other. That's, That's sorry, beautiful. So absolutely, absolutely. This is this is very impromptu. impromptu. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, we're just uh, we're very impromptu. So that, that was absolutely. Be and you know, because it's a, a true story. Bye. Oh, bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> and you're part. Of, you're part of World Community Arts too. You got. You're in the film now. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> World Community Arts Day, 17th of February. <laughs> From a, what's the earliest memory? And I was sitting there writing this little story for my granddaughters. And I used a bit of artistic license on it, so I hope you understand. I was three years old when my father woke me one morning. I asked him, what's up? He said, wake up, son, you're born. In the corner of a man, somebody planted a seed, a seed called memory. That thorn was the first of many. I can just come, scan that up, but it's not lost it. Where are we, Frank? Come on. Stop this up. Me and Kajita don't get on all together. Oh, I, I do apologise for all this. I don't mind. We're all, this is all impromptu for all of us, so... Here you are, we're live here at Bridge End. These memories, at first I thought of benevolence. Now they trouble me. It grew as a tree and each leaf was a memory. Occasionally one will fall and I will recall some pleasant little thoughts, some crazy observations, some hold, some hold enjoyable occasions, some old deplorable alterations, some terrible longs, some gentle little songs, some highs, some lows. The sentimental sorrows, the special situations, even the dangling conversations. And that's the end. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you. Hi, yeah, there at Bridge End. We're here every Wednesday um, from 3.30 to 4.30 and we sometimes do acrostic poems. What we do is we keep a poetry diary. So every day, you know, it could be I took the dog for a walk, I met some friends, I went to the cinema, I went to the theatre. And at, or usually by Wednesday, we have a, a poem um, to, to read out. We were kind of talking about haikus, you know, as well. Um, the one, one that I did was... Um, um, what was it I said? The five, seven, five... Fire in my belly, sun in my heart... We will never be apart. So every week, you know, it, it's very impromptu. It's creative, very, very creative. We come up with all sorts of things. Um, a lot of free verse. You never know what you're going to get. And that's what we love because we all are aiming for something. Um, Ross is going to be um, publishing a book soon. Um, you heard him earlier on. And we heard Phyllis um, reading poetry. She is going to be writing. She is writing a play in the Process of doing that, 
and that will be very exciting. We're hoping to hear that within the next few weeks as well. Frank has written several songs, and he's written uh, poetry, and he has written plays. And um, so we're all, all, all on our way. We're all doing something, aren't we, Frank? I tend to uh, well, <laughs> very much so. And so um, that's, that's our journey. It's a journey for us all. Um, I think we have Ross that's going to perhaps read out something yeah, we've done. I can read a poem. Right. With you in a moment. Thank you, Ross. Bring back to life shattered bones and heavy heart. Take a trip to Dundee and talk of sorrow and loss. Talk long and deep, hoping advice may seep into heads full of light. Dry out this true darkness and plight. But does it come from me? Past experiences colour my plea. She is the commander of our fate, why should I turn her to hate? So look with young eyes and notice it's not bleak, but a chance to start again, holding on to the future. Maybe don't give up. People deserve chances, or we'll be horribly cold and alone in the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Hi here, we have Jill Curran. Jill, what do you do here at Bridge End? Um, I'm a community support worker so, and in arts and crafts. Um, that's kind of about it, I think. <laughs> you are wonderful and, and, and wonderful um, crafts and arts and um, we're looking at the, the, the tapestry that's happening here as well. That, that's happening here. We can see it. There we go. So, and that's every... And that's every Wednesday, isn't it? Um, you can come along and um, and do a stitch or two. It's every Indeed. Wednesday at half yes. past two. And everybody's always made welcome here. And so please come along to Bridge Inn and see, look, we're beside this beautiful fire right now, enjoying the, the warmth. So, and the cups of tea and coffee and everything else with that wind howling outside. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank you, Jill. No, see you soon. Thank you. Bye. bye. But um, I can make cups of tea. You can do lots. Yeah. Wait, wait.